Today I'd like to take a look at an interesting use of the vanishing point filter. You can see here on my screen that we have an interior image and the client is curious about what it would look like if there were this antique wallpaper in the scene. We can use the vanishing point filter to paste patterns along perspective so that as it runs along the plane of the wall on the left, the wallpaper will appear there as well as this wall on the right going smaller off in the distance. So the first thing we need really is a selection of the wall on the left and a selection of the wall on the right. I've done most of the heavy lifting already. You can see I've got a channel selection of my wall on the left and one on the wall on the right. Now what we need is we need a place where we're going to paste this pattern into. So we need a blank layer. I'm going to create a new blank layer here. I'll call this one wall left. And now we need to copy the pattern to our clipboard. So I'm going to click here on this wallpaper and I'm going to hit Command A to select all, then Command C to copy it to our clipboard. And we're pretty much done with it for now, so I'm just going to minimize it down to my dock. Come back to my image and we need to get a selection going of the wall on the left. So I'm going to come back to my channels palette. We have this mask in place. I'm going to Command click it to activate it into an active selection making sure that I'm targeted on that wall left blank layer. This is when I now enter filter vanishing point. It's kind of a funny filter in, uh, it comes up with this default grid. I just hit delete and get rid of it because I need to make my own new one. And I hit command minus a few times so I can back out and see this whole thing. We essentially need to draw a plane out over this wall on the left using the create plane tool here. So I come over here to the vertical portion of this window casing and I click and I follow a parallel line following the crown molding at the top there in the ceiling till my cursor comes to about the outside edge of the photo on the left. And then I click and I draw a line straight down coming about to the bottom of the baseboard there in the room, trying to get as vertical a blue line as I can get. And then I click and I come back following as best I can a parallel line to the bottom of the baseboard there into a vertical line along the window casing and I click and it gives me this blue plane. My plane comes up red. It's Photoshop's way of saying that I'm not, uh, I don't have a good plane drawn out in perspective, but the blue line is a good sign. I can now hit Command V and paste this information into this space. It usually comes up real big like this, doesn't look quite right. So I have to scale it down with Edit Free Transform, which is Command T. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it over till it looks a little bit more realistic as far as the shape of the pattern as it's close to camera here. Holding Command and Option gives me the ability to copy this information. It comes in real big like this, so I'm just going to drag it down so I can see my transform handles. Holding Option and Shift, I can con constrain all four corners at the same time, making it a little bit smaller like so. And I can drag it. I might need to hit Command Equals to make my scene a little bigger here, but I basically look to do my best to try to get the patterns pretty close. Get it lined up here to the top edge and hidden behind the this, uh, occasional table here. And then I'm going to hit Command Option again and I begin pasting this information down along perspective and filling in some of these areas. Just making sure I don't have any strange gaps. A couple of little strange gaps down here in the distance. I'm not too worried about it. Just kind of paste this in there, like so. That looks pretty good. It's mostly covered down there off in the distance. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see it pastes this information to this blank layer for me. We're not done yet. we still got to paste to the right-hand wall. I'm going to hit Command D. And I need a new blank layer for the wall on the right. So I'm going to click that and wall right. Rename it. Making sure I'm targeted there. We're going to go back to the channels palette. Command click the wall right channel to activate that into a selection. And then I'm going to re-enter vanishing point, filter vanishing point. I'm going to hit delete on the random plane that comes up and command minus a few times. Oops, that's too much. And then I'm going to draw a new plane out. Coming here to the vertical window casing line, clicking once, following my crown molding straight up until I feel I'm about the outside edge of the right hand part of the photo, click, and then I'm going to come straight down to about this rug that's on the floor. 
That looks pretty good. I'm going to click and follow a parallel line along the edge of the rug till I get back to the window casing for a vertical line there. Bring it down so that my line meets up with the rug, and I'm going to click, and I got a blue grid, so that's nice. Command V to paste that information in. See it shows up over here. It's basically adhering itself to the upper left of the photo itself. But I'm going to hit Command T, and I'm going to drag it over here, and I'm going to drag it down so I can get to my transform handles. Holding Option and Shift, I'm able to resize it. Usually takes a little bit of finagling here to kind of resize it down to an appropriate size for this wall is kind of what I'm after. Something that's, you know, maybe just slightly larger, but so that the pattern looks similar to what I see on the left. Holding Command and Option, I can paste this down the line, looking to just kind of cover up little gaps, not worrying about too many of these other little bits. I can attack those in a second here. Copying my way to cover up some of these spots down below. And then there's a couple up top here I'll cover up nicely, just like just like so. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit Command equals and just kind of take a closer look, make sure I have everything covered up down there. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see it pastes this information to the wall right layer. Command D to deselect. It's looking a little flat. So now we need to utilize some blending modes to bring some of the existing lighting back into this pattern. I'm going to switch on my wall left here the blending mode of the layers to multiply. And you can see that it brings some of the original lighting back into the shot, including the shadows of this plant and everything. It's a little dark, but we can lighten it up. I'm going to do the same with the wall right. I'm going to switch that to multiply. And now from here, I can activate an adjustment layer, such as curves. And I need to clip this effect only to the wall right layer and nothing else that's below it. I can come here to Layer, Create Clipping Mask, and you'll see that it activates it and puts this little down arrow in indicating that this adjustment's only going to happen to the wall right layer. I can brighten it up to get more into the feeling of the lighting in the room. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target the wall left and do the same thing. I'm going to go and get a curves adjustment layer. Now, I could go back to layer, create clipping mask. I can also toggle on the properties of any of these adjustment layers. This little icon here, which is the shortcut to do that. I can also hover my cursor over the line between the curve and the wall left and hold the Option key, and it turns into that little icon, the square with the little down arrow, and I can click, and it clips that to the layer below it. Then I can brighten up that layer so it's more in keeping with the lighting of the room. What's great about this is you can see that with that channel selection, you know, boy, I was even able to get some of this wallpaper to appear through the vase and it's in keeping with the shadow, original shadows of the room, as well as on the artwork and uh, the lamp and everything. So, you know, if you have a client that's looking to see what a, you know, different texture or surface or pattern such as wallpaper would look like in a room, the Vanishing Point filter is a great way to paste pattern along perspective uh, in a space like this.